So now that we've configure the or install the remote access role we can configure it now you may see a notification pop up here saying that you need to do post deployment configuration and have a link for it if you don't have that or if that link doesn't open up don't worry about it we can do that configuration through a couple of new tools that have been added as we scroll down here we'll see we have remote access management and routing and remote access remote access management is a newer tool routing and remote access is the older tool Let's take a look at remote access management first. Now there are a couple of big advantages to remote access management. The first is this. In the configuration it is aware of the role services that we've installed. So we can see that we can configure direct access and VPN. Notice down here I can also do different servers as well if I have more than one. And then I can run my getting started wizard and it's going to give me options based on the configurations that it recognizes here, the role services that have been installed. So I can deploy both remote access and VPNs, remote access only, VPN only. Now we're going to do VPN, but when we do this VPN only, it's actually going to take us to our older tool to do it. So I'm going to go there in a minute, but I do want to show you this. If you do the deploy remote access only, it's going to walk you through a wizard. It's going to give you your configurations and it will take you step by step through deploying direct access. So uh, direct access, you really need to deploy it from here. The older tool isn't aware of direct access. So let me go ahead and close this. Since we're doing a VPN configuration, let me go to our routing and remote access tool. And this one, notice our routing and remote access is down. That's because we need to do our configuration. So I'm going to right click and configure and enable routing and remote access and click next. So here are our options. Remote access, dial up or VPN, network uh, address translation, virtual private network, secure connection between two private networks. We'll talk about that again in a second and custom configuration. If I go to custom configuration, I have VPN dial up, demand dial connections used for branch office routing as part of that uh, site to site VPNs we'll talk about in a second, NAT and LAN routing. Notice that what you do not have here is direct access. Direct access needs to be configured using the previous tool, the newer one. Okay, let's go back through some of these options in a little more detail. The routing or the remote access VPN. This is to allow individual users to connect to our VPN server for access to our network. They can connect through a dial up, God forbid, or through VPN. This will allow you to configure either one. Network address translation is typically employed on the edge of your network. So that should be deployed through your dedicated firewall. If you're not, if you're using this device to do routing and NAT and VPN at the edge of your network, not my preferred idea, but it is possible, then you can do network address translation off of this device. Now, this right here, virtual private network and NAT is basically just both of those put together. Now remember this was single users individually connecting for access to our network. That's the remote access VPN or sometimes called a host to site VPN. You can also do this link right here or this option is for a secured connection between two private networks. So this is going to be a site to site VPN. So what you do is you'd install a VPN server on one side, VPN server on the other side. On both sides you do the site to site VPN and you would do this in a situation where you have a main office and a branch office connected over VPN. Now this is going to require a uh, demand dial and back on custom and config and go next, this demand dial connection. And so what will happen is when a user in one site requests resources in the other site, the VPN server will demand dial or create the connection for them. Users don't have to do it manually like they would here. That's, by the way, another advantage of direct access. Direct access isn't always on VPN. It automatically connects whenever it detects an internet connection. But it is IPv6 only. Okay. We're going to do a remote access VPN. So let's go ahead and select that option and click next. Now here are options VPN or dial up. If you see this grayed out, it means typically one of two things. Either you don't have two inter at least two network connections or you have one, but one of them doesn't have a valid IP address. So it's not active yet. So 
if you see that grayed out, double check those things. Make sure that you have at least two connections. Make sure they're hooked up correctly. Make sure you've got valid IP addresses on both. Then come back in and you should see VPN as an option. So I'm going to select that and click Next. Now this is where naming that enter those Ethernet connections came in handy, and that's something we talked about in a previous video when we did our installation of remote access. We went into our Ethernet properties and we set the name, renamed the Ethernet connections, so we can very quickly tell which one's an Internet connection, which one's local area, and if we had more, then we could have named those as well. And it'll remind us of the purpose of each of those. And since I have to select the one that's going to be my interface to connect this to the network, I want to know that. Now if I didn't do that, sometimes I can figure it out from the IP address, especially if one of them is a private address and one of them is a public address. That's pretty straightforward. But if they're both private or if I don't remember where all the steps were, that becomes a little more complicated. The other thing is, if this is at the edge of your network, then that's definitely or should definitely be a, pri or a public address. However, if it is behind your firewall, then that's probably not going to be a public address or may not be a public address. And so you might need the reminder of which is which. If you do put this thing behind your firewall, remember you have to create the rules in the firewall that will allow VPN traffic through to this device. So we're going to identify the internet connection. We're going to say, yeah, enable security on the selected interface by setting up static uh, packet filters. And notice this will only allow VPN traffic to gain access to the server through the selected interface. So we'll click Next. All right, do we, how do we want to assign addresses to remote clients? Automatically, we'll do that if we're using a DHCP server or from a range of specified addresses. <clears throat> now, in this instance, we'll, we'd use a range of specified addresses typically if for some reason we're doing manual address allocation. Then we can say use this range of addresses and give them one out of there. If we're using DHCP, then we want to do this automatically. If we do not have a DHCP server on our network, we can set up a DHCP relay agent. We'll see that here in a little bit. And we'll click Next. And then, how do we want to authenticate? So we can use routing or remote access to authenticate requests, which means it's either going to use the uh, users in Active Directory if we're on a domain member, or if we're not on a domain member computer, which honestly is going to be preferable if you're doing this, by the way, have one uh, server that uses the uh, remote access server that is separate from your domain. But if that's the case, then you're going to use local user accounts or you're going to use uh, Radius. And if you have multiple servers doing this um, functioning as VPN gateways, then you're definitely going to want to use Radius. Now in this case, I don't have a Radius server set up in my little two computer demo network. So I'm going to go ahead and use routing and remote access. The other thing to be aware of is I do have this sitting on a domain controller. Using it for demo purposes, don't do that in real life. But uh, when we get done with this configuration, we'll look at using Active Directory and enabling user access, which is going to be very similar to doing it if you're using this uh, using routing remote access authentication or Windows authentication on a standalone computer. All right, let's click Next. Okay. We're done. Let's go ahead and click Finish, and this will do our configuration. This tells us I'm going to need to set up a DHCP relay agent. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute, and we'll click OK. And this will do our configuration. In the meantime, notice that this is, server is down. It's because it hasn't been configured yet. Once it finishes the configuration, that switches to up. And here is our configuration. Now, if we want to change the configuration, right click, go to properties. Notice this here gives me the disable routing remote access. It also gives me an option to enable direct access, which takes me to that new tool for managing direct access. Yes, go ahead and close that. So I can also set my server properties, which is going to include our functions. Uh, whether we're functioning as an IPv6 router, a local router, let us set our security, authentication, accounting, 
SSL certificates if we're using them, and you'll see all of our other security options. Now, at this point, we should be pretty much set up to allow clients to access, except for one thing. We haven't actually given permission to any user accounts to be able to log in. So we're going to open up Active Directory Users and Computers. I'm going to go to Users, and I'm just going to pick a generic user. Now this is loading a little bit slowly because my host server that I'm running this on is running multiple processes at the moment. And so it will take it a little bit longer than it normally should, so we're going to have to be patient here. Now while this is loading our list of users from Active Directory, <clears throat> I want to make you aware of um, one other thing. By default, all users are denied access from uh, remote access or dial-in access. And when we go to enable it, and we'll see this here in just a minute. All right, there we go. Let me open up my administrator user. Uh, and go to dial in and this is where we're going to allow that dial in access once it shifts to our actual page. Now our options, we'll give this a second and wait for it to populate our options here. There we go. Okay, so network access permission. We can allow access, deny access, or control access through the NPS network policy. Now, we haven't talked about NPS yet. We'll do that a little bit later on. But by default, unless there is a specific NPS policy that allows access, access is denied. So we're going to check allow access, and that will now allow this user to access... Uh, our network via VPN. And I know it's under dial-in, but this is cons the access is managed through both, or through this tab, for both uh, dial-up access using, uh, using a modem or through VPN. Now these other options, callback, verify caller ID, all of these are specific to dial-up, so we don't have to worry about those. All we have to do is set the allow access, apply, OK. And at this point, we should be configured and ready for VPN access. So now we would go to our client and we would set up a VPN connection to this machine's external IP address using that username. And we should be all set.